I like stadiums and I'm interested in geography, so I thought why not combine the two and go on a journey around the world to the 10 largest metropolitan areas by population and check out the largest stadium in each of them. Starting with Osaka. It is actually the birthplace of Naomi Osaka. Nagai Stadium. This is a relatively simple yet elegant stadium, owing to the fact that despite renovations, they haven't deviated too far from the original 1964 design. The main addition to the stadium since those days is of course the huge roof on either side. They not only shelter most of the spectators, but are looking pretty good in the process. 1964 was actually when Tokyo first hosted the Olympics, and this ground hosted some of the football throughout those games. Beijing. This place has the best Peking duck, outside of Peking of course. <clears throat> Beijing National Stadium. Also known as the bird's nest for obvious reasons. Actually no, I should explain. It's because like a bird's nest, it is largely made of reinforced concrete. The stadium was built for the 2008 Olympics, and Beijing didn't spare any expense. There are a ton of interesting features throughout, including an advanced heating and cooling system. It is no doubt an extraordinary stadium. Sadly, one of the people that helped design the stadium is now living in exile, after he was imprisoned for saying words. Mumbai. This place has the best Bombay mix, outside of Bombay of course. D.Y. Patil Stadium. This is not only named after D.Y. Patil, but is actually owned by him as well. So, he named it after himself. Humility is not for everyone. He was a politician after all. Anyway, it is a rather impressive stadium, with some unique design elements. This section in particular. While it might not be for everyone, I do like that it is clearly an Indian stadium. You wouldn't see something like this at an Australian or English cricket ground. Other than that, the amenities are top notch. There's bucket seating throughout, and a good portion of them are under cover. Dhaka. It's known as the city of mosques, due to its many mosques. So I guess if you're late to work, you can't use the excuse of, oh sorry my alarm didn't go off. Like India, Bangladesh also prefers cricket to football. But until the new cricket stadium is finished being built, Bangabandhu National Stadium, a football and athletic stadium, is the largest in the city and indeed the country. It is mostly in poor condition, but there have been some newer additions added in recent years, which makes for an interesting look. But yeah, spectators are miles from the field, so for football, it's really not ideal. Cairo. Famous for its pyramids, infamous for its scammers. Cairo International Stadium. In addition to being home to two of the city's biggest clubs, it's also the primary home of the Egyptian national team. So it's kept pretty busy. In recent years, it's had a bit of a makeover with these vibrant orange and blue seats and blue turf covering the running track being the most notable additions. I think it looks pretty good. You certainly can't accuse it of being dull. What it lacks is covered seating in what is a pretty hot city. I can't imagine many day games are scheduled. Mexico City, a city that ensures that nobody scores a zero on the capital city's pop quiz, Estadio Azteca. This stadium might not be the most technologically advanced stadium you'll see in this video, but it's probably achieved more than any of the others, at least when it comes to football. It's hosted the World Cup final not once, but twice. Just one other stadium has done that. As for the design, well, they kept it pretty simple on the outside, with plenty of bare concrete on show. However, the interior has a lot going on. Firstly, the artwork there on the seating is an ode to capitalism, but it also kind of looks good. Secondly, the steep multi-tiered seating makes for an even more intimidating atmosphere. Sao Paulo. Portuguese means St. Paul in Sao Paulo. Sorry, Sao Paulo means St. Paul in Portuguese. 
Stadio do Morumbi. I mentioned how the stadium in Osaka has changed very little since it opened. Well, this one is even older and has changed even less. There have been a few upgrades to the amenities and that's about it. It's actually a pretty interesting design. The way the upper tier is about three times as large as the lower ones makes for a distinctive look. I do think that Sao Paulo FC would still be a little jealous of some of the other Sao Paulo clubs when they visit their stadiums however. The gap in quality is just night and day. Shanghai. Uh, I don't know. Shanghai Stadium. That is the Mexico City of stadium names. Just recently this stadium underwent an extensive renovation in preparation for the 2023 Asian Cup taking place in Qatar. That renovation converted it from a multi-purpose stadium with a running track to a football specific, albeit not perfectly rectangular stadium. So even though it won't actually be hosting the 2023 Asian Cup, the local football fans have still benefited. Delhi, Bali. Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium. While it's no bird's nest, this has a similar but less squiggly exterior. I would be quite impressed if an actual bird's nest had symmetry like that. That symmetry is carried over to the interior with a triple tiered seating bowl of equal proportions. Even though there is a purpose built cricket stadium in Delhi, this has actually hosted international cricket in the past, including the first ever day night ODI in India's history. That was long before it was redeveloped prior to the 2010 Commonwealth Games though. Tokyo. It's not only the biggest city in the world, but also the biggest city in Japan. Japan National Stadium, as you may already know, was built for the ill-fated 2020 Olympics. I mean, it still went ahead, but without any fans. It was a shame, however, the people of Tokyo were left with a pretty impressive stadium. One that isn't as simple as it first appears. My favorite aspect to this stadium's design is that throughout, they have used timber from each and every Japanese prefecture. The exterior features wood of the living and dead variety, and inside there are wooden beams holding up the roof. It looks great. As for the seating bowl itself, it is quite simple, but that's all right. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.